Okay, okay, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, one and all, I think I have pressed all the relevant buttons. I've turned the dials. I've twisted the knobs. We are live on YouTube, Kick and Twitch. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. We have a great show for you today. We are going to be talking about the biggest topic of our day, okay? One of the most massive discourses to ever drop on the scene, okay? Uh, we are going to be talking about Sydney Sweeney's breasts. What does that have to do with anything, you may be wondering? Wick, what are you talking about? I've never heard of this. I will tell you, there are dozens, and I'm not kidding you, dozens of articles about this out there in the ether about the war for Sydney Sweeney's breasts. And today on this show, we're going to be talking about, oh, we had our one of our guests. We have more guests coming. Don't worry. Uh, one of our guests was just backstage, but then she left. Um, thank you for being here on time. Brittany, <laughs> how are you today? What are your thoughts? I'm doing very well. Thank you. I'm excited. I uh, don't didn't really know who she was. I knew she was on Euphoria. So I did a deep dive. I watched lots of videos. I have uh, examined for science purposes, the photo in question or photos, and I feel like I am prepared. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. Um, give me one more sec okay. to message this person. Uh, because again, it's, it's a lot. I wasn't actually going to do a show on this, but a gentleman, a friend of mine, Layman, uh, messaged me mm. and said he really wanted to talk about it. And he said he'll be a couple minutes late, so that's fine. But, uh, the rest of the guests should be here by now. Uh, I guess, can you give me your, your like first impression on all of this? Like when, when you read all these, uh, conspiracy theories, when you read all these kinds of, uh, back and forth what are what are your what were your initial thoughts what are, what is your initial impression are they overselling it why are why is everyone talking about this well okay it's kind of weird because you would think it actually only has to do with her chest but it actually has to do with a lot more it's also her family background it's her connections in hollywood specifically it's the stories she tells that actually a lot of people find out are lies and this all connects to the conspiracy theory of the conservatives loving her and the other people not loving her let's call them i guess liberals but it's interesting because her family's maga and then the MAGA has a connection to the boobs. It all comes down to the boobs. But ultimately, I'm fascinated by the way that her team has branded her. And I think that's interesting as well. So I'm excited to talk about it. We are going to uh, really milk this topic for all it's worth, <laughs> I promise you. Uh, we have one of our other guests here today, Jane Gypsy. Hello. How are you? Hello. Hello. Sorry again. I was... So close to being on time, I think, but I had to... You tried your best. It's okay. I, I did, yes. Okay. Getting used to it. But um, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, are we doing... We're talking about Sydney Sweeney's breasts um, Just... and the discourse surrounding it. Uh, what, what are your initial thoughts on this? We have a couple more people coming and hopefully okay. they'll be here soon. But again, for the purpose of killing time till they get here, what are your thoughts on this? Go ahead. Okay, so I have kind of like, it's kind of conflicting because I think conservatives are kind of like partially right about this, that like, you know, her showing off her boobs on, on late night TV is the death of wokeness, but I think they're unintentionally right. I think they're right for the wrong reasons. Yeah, what does that mean, uh, <laughs> the death of wokeness and how are her breasts killing it? Wokeness, so, to be clear. I think what they're trying to get at is, from what I've read, it seems like um, they have this idea that the uh, progressive idea is that um, we've like just killed beauty standards, all beauty standards, and every woman is beautiful, and um, we don't, you know, like categorize levels of beauty anymore, which I don't think is necessarily true. I think we've just been more inclusive. Um, but it's also interesting because progressive ideas, like, typically have been associated with um, women's, like, sexual liberation, which is something that conservatives definitely try to, like, condemn. So it seems like they're only accepting of 
women's sexuality and embracing that when it suits them um, in particular. But where I think they are kind of right is I do think the objectification of Sydney Sweeney and her boobs and just like kind of minimizing her to, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm out of breath, to her boobs is like kind of an indication that feminism and this wokeness has kind of like put in a, uh, put in sexism and objectification on the back burner. Okay, well, we will talk about it. We'll get into it, I'm sure, as we go. We have our third guest here. They're coming in one at a time, slowly but surely. We'll get them all. We'll collect them all eventually. Layman, welcome to the show. How are you? And uh, what are your thoughts on, um, specifically, Sydney Sweeney's boobies? <sighs> okay, um, first of all, hi. My name is Layman. I'm a, I'm a... I make videos for fun. I like to have fun on the internet. It's fun. And um, my my thoughts. Okay. I yeah, I came in a little late. I'm guessing they both gave their full thoughts already. So I'm just... Objectification, and it's a conspiracy. Her family's MAGA, and it all leads back to the breasts. That's what we've got through so far. <laughs> it's your turn, sir. What do you got for us? Go ahead. Sounds good. So... This is really this is a this is a fun topic because um the first article that was ever written about this topic that made this this argument that Sydney Sweeney's endowment um is is destroying wokeness came from a article from the National Post which is the the mainstream Canadian conservative outlet usually it's American conservatives who are saying all this weird these weird things about the culture and stuff like that um, but, uh, for once it's coming out of my backyard. So that's why I thought this would be fun to talk about. And, uh, I have a word for people like this who have these weird, strange positions. Uh, it's called the freak, right? That's what I like to call them. The freak, right? And, uh, I think the freak, right? Who abandon the, the good socially conservative values, um, do so at their own peril. Um, you know, like they're the, right. This article is basically arguing that this this openly LGBT, like pro-choice woman, who's a very kind of like sexually liberated, sexually open woman, to an excessive degree, in my opinion, is somehow uh, is somehow like anti-progressive, or I mean, that's what wokeness kind of is. At least how it's used in practice is it's kind of just referring to a broad umbrella of ideas that refer to kind of like modern day socially progressive values and cultural ideals and stuff like that. Um, usually used pejoratively to refer to ones that are being taken too far, typically of like a collectivist or kind of like identity politics driven um, side. And, you know, the, the, the idea that Sydney Sweeney is like this just because she's conventionally attractive um, <laughs> doesn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, you can't be more woke than being a, a sexually liberated woman who is who is open about this, who's openly LGBT, who's openly um, pro-choice, like there's there's nothing there's nothing like based or conservative about this. It's it's just it's just strange. Um, it's 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 so silly, and I don't like it. I th I really don't like it because I think that conservatives undermine the parts of themselves that I think oh. are actually pretty good. So, sorry, so you think that uh, to be clear that you think that Sydney Sweeney's breasts. Um, and the way that conservatives have been dealing with it are actually destroying conservatism, conservatism. They're, they're under, I, I wouldn't go that, I wouldn't use language that hyperbolic, but Why it, it does, it does undermine, it does undermine their own kind of philosophy towards, um, sexuality where sexuality, rather than being this kind of like public, this kind of like public liberated, like spectacle or whatever, that's. That's about like empowering the woman and stuff like that, um, which is what Sydney Sweeney is doing, which is the progressive position. That's a progressive position. Um, the socially conservative position is basically like the opposite of, of Sydney Sweeney's whole thing, where it's like you're sexually modest and you as a woman, your goal in life is to get married and have children and have like a have like a healthy monogamous sort of situation going on. Not that, I mean, I don't know Sydney Sweeney's personal life. But I'm sure that she probably has a healthy monogamous relationship herself. I don't know her personally, but uh, as far as just that 
that general idea, just the idea of that to me makes Sidney Sweeney's sure. endowment um, woke, if anything. <laughs> A, let's, uh, well, mind. let's 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 uh, let's open up the discussion. Let's talk about it. Let's kind of get uh, uh, some dialogue flowing here, gang. Let's not be so stiff. Come on, loose it up. I know everyone's kind of rushing in here, but come on. Roll well, first shoulders. of all, it's nice to meet you two. I uh, I uh, I uh, I'm not familiar with with who you are, Jane. I, I don't recognize you, but I've seen Brittany Simon on many of the things that I've watched in my life, so. Hello. And actually, Hello. everyone sounds really good, but Jane, is there any way your mic could go a little louder? If not, don't even worry about it. Is that better? Oh, so much better. Thank you so much. My okay. viewers were having okay. a hard time hearing you, but that looks better in my OBS. Um, okay, okay, cool. I'm curious, because I looked up, uh, what's her name? I have a hard time saying her name. Sweeney. Say it again. Sydney. Sydney. Sweeney. Okay, see, if you've seen the show, I, the Euphoria, throws she's me. the blonde. Yeah. I, I researched her. I watched a bunch of videos on her, but her name fucks me up. I think it, you know, it just like I makes also me... watched a bunch of Sid videos. Yeah, I did. Before. I researched. Let me tell oh, you. Okay. And I'm curious about the details of her life because I found it a little confusing about her branding. And I think this is like a branding. I'm going to be a conspiracy theorist about the branding of her since she's okay. been caught in so many lies and people have like tried to paint her as this like rags to riches kind of person, which I think is interesting. And then she gets pictured in like these MAGA parties at her parents' house for her mom's 60th. And then she's still like this beautiful, like she's out there with her body. She's out there with her stances. But then you find out that even her marketing teams, she being a part of that marketing team because she produced the movie she was in during a romantic um, film she had done during the marketing, she wanted it to seem almost like she was having an, having an affair with her co-star. And a part of me thinks that's interesting. And I think this ties all the way into the conservatives and their feelings around her. And I wondered if there was like some sort of like moralizing of the boobs because of the 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 – the way she's painted in media, if that makes sense. Because, like, the progressives don't like her because she seems like a cheating, lying person. And then the conservatives seem to be question. I'm confused about the conservative stance on her. They either, up like, uphold her as a MAGA queen because her parents are MAGA. You and me both, sister. But, that, but I'm confused because a part, of, but a part of what I saw, they like her. But then a part of what I saw, they hate her. And I'm very confused at that. Can Have you read that the... Have you read the art, the, the National Post article? I didn't read, I don't think I read that specific one because now that okay. you're saying it, I was like, that doesn't sound familiar to me. I can tell you the the art, it's, it's one thing that's really interesting too is a woman wrote this, like a Ooh. straight woman wrote this. So Came that's, today, that's right? yeah, like you wouldn't yeah. expect that. Um, you would, because like the way I see guys talk about this, if I happen to catch it online is, it just feels like, okay, you guys just think she's hot. You just want her to agree with you because you think she's hot. And it's like, well, okay, that makes sense. Then I see a straight woman wrote, writes this article, and I'm like, what the fuck? So the the basic, like, if I was to steel man it, mm -hmm. the basic argument that I'm kind of getting is woke people, progressive people, because they're so focused on, like, the marginalized rather than what's, like, common in society, they are going to prop up the people who are not as conventional. So when you apply this to attraction, the the... The insinuation is that, well, okay, progressives want to take conventionally unattractive people and make them seem attractive. But since you have Sydney Sweeney, who's this like conventionally attractive, like she's got the, the as, as many would say, the bimbo blonde aesthetic to her or whatever, that because this represents convention, that because it's conventional, this is because it's traditional, you could say. Is this that... Is is that is there not something to that the symbology of it the no. the fact there's nothing to that there's nothing to the fact that the left does challenge traditional beauty beauty standards because there it there absolutely is, does yeah yeah, yeah they, they do i'm not denying that they do and, and to be clear um since i guess one of my guests did not show up tonight i'm going to be participating in this as, as well as moderating but continue him. please okay. <laughs> um, so uh so i yeah it matt i under i I think that that is true. A lot of progressives do do that, mostly with like in like gamer communities and stuff like that, or just you know just generally telling people like, "Hey, don't say that that person's ugly. That's rude or whatever. Everybody's attraction is subjective." Blah 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 blah. Um, but I think with Sydney Sweeney specifically, it just makes no sense because progressives are not going to, generally speaking, prioritize the fact that she's. Like not if somebody does feel strongly about that, like they're not generally going to have a problem with somebody 
who's just like a sexually independent woman who seems like culturally progressive for the most part. Um, the worst thing that I can think of wouldn't even be related to that because I know that like her parents are conservatives and are openly conservatives and she doesn't like disown her family or anything because of that. Like if I was to draw a connection well, for what? that's enough to make a lot of progressives think that she's just like a Republican that that in and of yeah. But I wanted to I wanted to ask to a, a couple questions, one to Brittany, one to Jane. Um, I'll start with Brittany. So you mentioned some time uh, a few lies that she's been caught in for the education of my audience. Can you give us a couple examples when you say she's been caught in lies? What do you mean? Yeah, first of all, I'm sorry, I was going over the post really fast. The ending to this post is hilarious. <laughs> like, what are they? Okay, now I get it. Now I get the theme a little bit more. I think I yeah. jumped into the other part of her controversy. And I'm realizing like, there's okay, a wait. lot. They're surprising. There's a lot. It's a surprisingly beefy topic. Okay, but carry on. Okay, so basically, she has this rags to riches story. She was born in Spokane. And alleges that as a teenager, she moved to L.A. to pursue acting, but through school. And a lot of the details of that are fuzzy, looking like she was always ending, going to end up in L.A., confusion about Spokane, how long she was there. Now, if you guys don't know, I lived in Seattle for five years. And contrary to popular belief, Washington State is actually primarily a MAGAville state. It's MAGA outside of Seattle. And so when I was living there and I would go travel, I was always shocked at how MAGA it was. But that's pretty common. So her parents being MAGA and from Spokane makes sense. But her story about why I went to school there and what was happening is a little bit questionable. So she claims that she had a job at Universal Studios, but no employment shows there. Apparently, the only connection she had to Universal Studios was for helping costuming, which she got allegedly, maybe not, who knows, through her family. So Nepo baby accusations happening. And then the idea that she has always been branded the way you see her now. She's not a blonde. She hasn't been always look, she hasn't looked the way she looks now all the way. I don't know if those boobs are natural, but I think they are. <laughs> like, you know, it's like this idea that the person that we're seeing and the brand we're seeing is a brand. And this brand is being co-opted by whoever feels like they can use it to extend sort of like their, I guess, image. So like I guess in this anti-work article. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I guess in this article, they're saying like, see, this is what women should look like. I guess bringing back Marilyn Monroe and doing a call to that. But yeah. also, I would like to point out that plenty of conservative cultural spaces do sexualize women. They just do it differently. The country bubbles, one of them, country music. Um, have you seen those music yeah. videos? Woo, girl. And I'm not complaining, but it's definitely not modest, you know? And then there's the modest bubble, which I think is even more interesting because they sort of like capitalize on, we objectify you so much, we need you to be modest, which is sort of ironic. And then there's Sweeney Todd, who I think is so beautiful. I don't think anyone's arguing that. But I think she kind of like equally represents positives for both camps. So the irony is like you can either hate her or love her or just use the brand how you want. But the lies are silly. They're like her come up story. They're not important. They're just, is she even a person? Well, not really. She's a brand. I agree that there's conservative spaces that sexualize women. I find that though, if we were to kind of draw a trend kind of cross-culturally, I'd say that it more so has to do with um, kind of like this this prudishness rather than being like explicitly like, I think this person's hot and I want to have sex with her kind of sexualizing. I think it's more just like, oh, if I see a, if I see a tiny little bit of a boob, just the top of it, mm -hmm. then fuck you. You know, I think that's the kind of sexualizing if I was to attribute it to conservatism, as far as the kind of like, like, you know, the, the half naked, like country, She's got the beer and her ass is out and like that kind of whole thing. I'd say that's like more of an American thing specifically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In my country, conservatives are not like that. Conservatives like just generally, especially the women for obvious reasons, uh, the female conservatives are not a fan of that kind of stuff. And I'm not a fan of that kind of stuff either. Mm -hmm. Like I, that's what, <laughs> that's why I told you to be kind of happy you. on here. Okay. Uh -huh. You're anti-boob. I got gotcha. you. I feel you. Right. I, I understand it. I don't condone it, but I get it. I wanted to to ask Jane real quick to kind of get her in on the discussion. Right. So uh, we talked in DMs and can you kind of give your, I guess, basic complaint about uh, I'm about to call her Sweeney Todd too, uh, <laughs> Sydney uh, of Sydney's behavior. Right. And how she has played into it and things like that. Can you just kind of give us the, the rundown? Go ahead. Okay, so I really want to be careful. Like, I do not want to shame her at all, but I do think she, 
I want to critique or criticize her just like a little bit because she, um, from all of what I've seen, and she has been very open about this, she grew up with uh, body dysmorphia from a very young age in middle school. And it had to do with um, early breast development in middle school. And she would be teased about it and she would wear baggy clothes and um, she wanted a breast reduction, she said. Um, and so I think now that we are like kind of just I feel like we really are objectifying her. Like Sydney is like a really talented actress. She's a film producer. She's open. She uh, launched a film production company at 25. She's she's been acting since 14. Um, from if this is not a lie, she said she moved to LA at um, at 12 years old. She presented like a five year business plan to her parents and convinced them to move from Spokane to LA to start her acting career. It didn't really take off until, like, 19 years old. But she was in, like, you know, background, whatever, like, little roles and stuff like that. Um, and everybody who's worked with her, like, has really loved her. So I think it's just, like, if we're kind of allowed... When you look up Sydney Sweeney and all these comments, it's, it's always about her boobs. I have, like, I copied and pasted a bunch of quotes, like, from these articles, and, like, they're just disgusting, just, like, all about her boobs, like, saying, oh, her face isn't ugly, but, you know, we don't care what she has to say, she's not a good actress, but we'll still watch, because, you know, she's got good boobs or whatever. So, I think it's just, like, it's awesome that she is embracing, like, now that she's, like, embracing and feeling empowered by her sexuality and her body, but I think it's also, like, just credit not discrediting i can't think of the word but it's like not doing um not doing you think talent. it's hurting feminism yeah it's not doing any favors to just kind of like minimize her to the size of her breast and i think she has a responsibility as somebody who had body dysmorphia and said it was like accelerated from being in the hollywood industry to show like to young girls that you know, she's not going to just allow to be objectified and be seen and remembered for just her boobs. But I, to a certain point, I, like, can't judge her for embracing it and stuff. But still, I think she has a... I just wish she would, like, talk about that more. Okay, I'm not so, going to... Wait, can I get aggro for a minute, but not at you? Because I, I read an article, girl. Let me tell you, a girl. Because I want to believe this story, too. I have no shade to throw at her as a human, right? I don't know her. But from what I saw, even her co-star said... That the branding for their romantic film in which they were supposed to insinuate an affair was happening was so devastating to his own personal relationship because she was in a secure one and he was going through a breakup that for her it was fine and like part of her idea and it worked. But that means that she participated in a campaign that made her look like she was having an affair on her engaged like her fiance. And so part of me is looking at her like man feminism girl doesn't have time to think about feminism girl's too busy branding so part of me is like is she doing this on a purpose which in my mind would be good branding but also maybe unethical branding it's up to her i don't want to project my values onto her so there's that like caveat too right is she even does she even need to be held to that standard is that a standard she's asked to be held to the feminist standard i mean i don't know much about her politics I'll, what are you thinking go ahead my values onto her so there are <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, well, first of all, um, everything Jane said, I agree with, um, but I would go so far, but with what Brittany said, like, I would go so far as to say like, well, yeah, like, let's just say that, yeah, she does have a responsibility to not portray, not sort of, I guess, make what I would consider to be like antisocial, downwardly mobile behavior normal and seem commonplace. To be, so, to be clear, what, yeah. what precisely are you saying that she is doing that is promoting antisocial behavior? Well, what Brittany just said, the example she brought up where she is kind of putting on this like, he, 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 I'm pretending to have an affair, but I'm not, ha, 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 despite what her relationship is actually like. Now, obviously, we don't know her personally, so it is possible that within the confines of her own relationship, her boyfriend or husband, I don't know, is okay with this, and they're chill and whatever, but the issue is that nobody actually knows what that dynamic is like. And for most people, they're not going to be okay with that. And I could see situations where younger people who are still learning about relationships are probably in high school. They're still getting into all this stuff are going to kind of go into these sorts of situations. 
and think like, well, maybe I can bring this up. Maybe they see this, you know, famous woman who they they probably, if they really, really enjoy her work, if they think she's a great actress or whatever, probably are going to look up to her to some degree, which is just normal for everybody. I did it with Ryan Gosling when I was in high school. Okay. He's literally me. And, um, you know, and I still do it to this day with Ryan Gosling in different ways. But um, the point is, is that a lot of young girls could see this kind of behavior take that influence, be like, huh, maybe I'll do this to my boyfriend. And then that creates issues with the boyfriend. And then she doesn't realize why these are issues because you're in fucking high school. You probably, maybe you just think what he's doing is like irrational or whatever, but now you have, but you don't have like a common morality to appeal to because, well, now we've normalized this idea from all of our celebrities that have all this influence over the culture and stuff like that, that this kind of thing is okay. And most couples and most people are not going to think that something like that is okay. So you have to, if you're going to, if you're going to put yourself out there as this giant celebrity person that people are inevitably going to look up to, this gigantism to you, um, then you have to understand what comes with that, what, what you're going to be doing de facto and accept that responsibility. Do you think everyone in the public guy has that responsibility? Everybody who's famous, yes. What's the yes. line on that? How many followers do you need for, for it to matter? <laughs> well, I mean, I think that you, well, I think you should try to be a good role model, period. But I would say that the responsibility magnifies more and more and more depending on how many people you're reaching. So somebody who is, let's say, for example, somebody's a father, right? And that father to that kid has a responsibility to be a good role model to that kid. But then let's say this father becomes like the prime minister of Canada. And it's like, well, okay, now you have a responsibility to be a good role model to your kid and to the entire country now too. And so the responsibility kind of magnifies like that. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Do we think it's fair to put that on Sydney Sweeney when we have countless examples of men in the industry behaving very poorly? And in fact, sometimes that's celebrated. Why? Why? I, I guess what I'm struggling to figure out is why Sydney Sweeney is some sort of why is everyone talking about her again? Like I She's said, hot. there's That's dozens why. of articles on this. There's dozens, and I again, we have people behaving badly in famous places all the time. That's kind of the norm. No, so yeah, why? I mean, why Sydney? Right? Like, I mean, I mean, I mean, I do think this happens to everybody to different degrees. Like, obviously, I mean, every celebrity is what I should say, not literally everybody. But um, every celebrity, yeah, gets gets people fixate on all their like flaws and all their um, their their positive attributes too, and kind of analyzes them in this way. But and they're not talking about look. Ways. They're not talking about these lies she's doing. You know what they're talking about? Her boobies. That's what they're talking. I mean, about. I think Her she boobies. wants them to talk about them. Yeah. yeah, that's what. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, I mean, I do. If you yeah. if you go to her Instagram, you just have to go to her Instagram to understand this. No other actress is like. Do, <laughs> there's Brittany coming in. Brittany's got the receipts ready to she's go. Gonna, she's um, gonna pull a Tom, <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but okay. Um, we are like, if you go to her Instagram, like she's obviously like, she's obviously trying to fucking rock it in a lot of different images of her, like. You know, I mean, I you got, might maybe have to go back to find the really explicit ones, but like she's not trying to like hide this. She's not she's not wearing like just like normal clothing that might have like a V neck that like a woman would wear a lot of the time. A lot of the time, she yeah. What's up, Brit? Okay, well, got? okay. I will take the. F I'm a sex positive feminist. So I'll, if I'm gonna get political, though, I don't identify as a political feminist anymore. I'm more like in the philosophy sense it's talking. So I'm sex positive, obviously. I would say this is pretty normal, what she's wearing. And I would say she looks beautiful. And I would say she's rocking the fashion. But I would also say that in a conservative atmosphere, this would be pretty scandalous. I would say that when I saw even the pictures of her at her mom's birthday, I was thinking to myself, like, for my parents who are very conservative and, and Trump voters, um, I can't even go home with, like, a, a tank top that shows my belly button. So let alone what Sweeney what, – sw What's her name? Sweet Sydney. 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 Man, I swear Sydney I got to get evaluated Sweet. for dyslexia, kids. Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> Sydney. When I look at her, I see her as more probably with, like, maybe cool conservative parents who are more voting for Trump for the money than the, like, the religious aspect. You know what like I'm saying? Socially, like socially liberal, fiscally yeah. conservative. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Kind of. Like her parents were very religious. 
okay, well, when I say religious, I mean for real. Oh, girl, God's you. I don't know, no God that's going to be like, okay, she's in lingerie, ma'am. She's talking Catholic education. And, yeah, I'm talking, talking for real, for real. You know, <laughs> there was um, also like a live of her that she did. I don't know how long ago it was, but I think it was like semi recently. It was definitely after Euphoria, and she was crying in this live about um, comments that she's gotten on her social media about her appearance. So I do think like oh, okay. she might be, you know, outwardly trying to you know, come off as confident and rock it, like, which is great. But I do think like that might be kind of like not like a cope, but like a way to disguise like maybe insecurities that she's still struggling with a little bit. And that's good if she's trying to like handle them and stuff. But I do think this like just like really I mean, the comments that like some people have like this one was. Carol, I know why. Fantastic figure. Something heterosexual people with intact organs, formerly known as men, like to watch. We don't care about or hear a word she says. And then, like, she gets That's cast ridiculous. because she has a pair. I agree with the old geezer. This was about the lady who wrote the article, which was titled, Sydney Sweeney, Not Pretty and Can't Act. Top Hollywood producer Carol Baum claims. Uh, and all the on. comments are about her boobs. Not okay, pretty. I this was I don't know about today. the acting thing, but this who, was is, today. who is saying that she's not pretty? Copers, Copers are saying it. She's also, know. she's she's pretty great at acting too. Like if you've seen yeah, this she's stuff, a really she's, good actor. she's great at acting. Yeah, I mean, she like, is. Fair, I, that's more subjective though, right? Okay, fair enough, right? If you don't like her acting, okay, whatever. But to say that she's not pretty, like I got eyes, bro. Like I know I wear glasses, but even and without the people glasses. People in the comments, they were saying like, oh, you know, her body's pretty, but her face is like a five. She has like drooping eyelids. They were like mentioning all these crazy things. And honestly, she she's has a beautiful face. She's just like yeah. beautiful all around. So okay, I do think just like they're they're coping, right? Like it's a cult. Yeah. They don't care. Yeah. They say Margot Robbo, Margot Robbie, same thing with her. Like come, I know. Girl, come on, please. Okay. They weren't they weren't in 2013, but they are now, mm. and that's unfortunate. It's that's political, so cool. right? Like it, they're pretty yeah, yeah, yeah. if you like them and then they're ugly if you don't. Which by the way is like pretty common, right? You ever see someone say something and you get the ick for them? <laughs> it's like I think it's that too. But I will yeah. say, do you guys like, I mean, obviously I agree with you, Jane, that she's a girl and the pressure's there and there's no doubt about that. I mean, gosh, you're going to get shamed no matter what. She's 26 as well. Do you think she would do herself a better service if she dressed more modestly? Or do you think that, no, in order to get past this hurdle, she's got to dress the way she wants and learn to not listen to comments and to block people? Like what would be the solution, right? I think it's about how she's dressing or anything. I think it's about maybe her responses to some mm -hmm. of the criticism and some of the more objectification and uh, things like things like that. Because almost like every, like she did a music video um, and like Rolling Stones for, for some band and uh, she got to pick her own outfit. She, it was freestyle dance moves and the criticism was where you, you were objectified, like did you blah, blah, blah. And she was like, I did that like all for myself. Like I, I picked everything. I got to pick my outfit out of a variety of choices. And it was, like, empowering for me, which is, like, mm. you know, great. But I think we should give, like, I, those comments alone aren't empowering, though. Like, her being able to do that is, is empowering. You can see it like that. But is but it I at think, the expense of others, do you think? Um, I mean, yeah, possibly. Because, like, when we think of Hollywood culture, like, when we think of male actors, I'm, I'm going to fix my camera blur in a second, too. When we think of Hollywood actors like Johnny Depp, Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, first we think of their talent, their work, and their skills. And then we think of female actor, actors, uh, Angelina Jolie, Megan Fox. We think of most beautiful woman in the world, uh, the hot girl, like, bent over the car, you know, like, whatever. And then be, their, fair, their talent okay. and work comes second. So, to, be to be fair, I think there are better examples of that that you could have gave. I would not pick Megan Fox. Megan Fox is not good at acting, in my opinion. But yeah, she's if, not. Angelina, but she's beautiful yeah, she, and very I don't kind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why. That's I think with Megan Fox specifically, that's what pe people focus on her looks because there's like nothing else to it. I think with Angelina Jolie, like yeah, sure, people people definitely view her as like a hot woman and stuff like that. But as far as like the role she, but. When she's done like a good role where her acting was really good, she did get a lot of praise for it. Like back in 2008, when Angelina Jolie was in The Changeling, this was like a like hailed performance. Everybody was, everyone mentioned Angelina Jolie that year. Her acting was, your acting was amazing in this movie sort of situation. But what I, to, to riff off I'm gonna of I'm going to fix my camera two. blur real quick. So if I go off the screen, but I'm still listening. I can still No worries. Okay. So, so 
having said all that though, it is true that there's a, a sexual bias towards women than men in in Hollywood, of course. Um, sex sells, and I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm I'm saying that sex sells. And if you are a if you are a heterosexual man, which is most men, um, and if you are a heterosexual woman, which is most women, the higher sex the those with the higher sex drive are going to have more of a responsibility to control those appetites, but you can't control, but, or sorry, I'm not saying you can't control. You absolutely can and you should, but what will happen in practice- Hold on. I, I don't know if you want to show your, whatever you're showing on the screen right now. I don't know if that's private shit. Um, my camera settings, but yeah. Okay, I, I didn't, I saw- my video for a second, my bad. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. Uh, I just didn't want suddenly to have a- have A an picture. Instance. No, yeah, thank yeah, you, yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah, 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 no worries. So what I was going to say is like, I, I don't like, so I don't actually view these things in economic terms. I just want to say that because I'm about to use something, but it is like, this is like a supply and demand thing. So if you have a bunch of like horny, gross, disgusting guys who are, who, who don't know how to, who are too, who are too immature to know how to control their sexual appetites. They are going to see the hot girl and go awooga more likely than the than the heterosexual woman is going to with are you, a guy. On are you for fish. fucking real right now? Yeah, are I you am. for fucking real? Do you not know how women, especially young women, objectify and treat boy bands? Right? Have you ever been amongst young women yes. when they are talking about their yes. uh, media idols who are cute? men and i yes. find it funny jane that you mentioned brad pitt tom cruise right uh who else did you uh johnny depp yeah These they're attractive guys guys. Are unattra like the, what are you talking about like i i don't know what you guys are talking about no no, no. For the point These that she people was... are objectified to fucking hell and back by women all the time right and that's okay right that's okay it's seen as okay in a very real way right i i i so I, I'm not saying I don't know what Jane was. I don't know what you think Jane was saying, um, but I think that, like, when it comes to conventionally attractive men in Hollywood, it's not that they. It's not that women don't like don't ever objectify those guys. It's that it just happens a lot less than it does when guys objectify the women in Hollywood. So I just that's think, why I think women have more dignity, and we keep it to ourselves. <laughs> I just what? think like I, and women talk about it amongst themselves. I think we have relationships with it. Maybe men have it at a higher scale. If you actually did one to one, have you ever been to a Chippendale you know? show? Yeah, for sure, bro. We've all you been to a burlesque and like strip club. Well, right? how, do you think that's that's you're a showing reserve? your age right now? Do you dude? think that, that was a the, do you do you consider that dignified? As long as it's consensual, yes. I mean, I, no. I think oh, dignity is about to him, yeah. But dignified ain't the word. Well, look, I think I think you shouldn't have too much of a parasocial relationship with anyone you're seeing. So you should be a little bit more, you know, have like some dignity. There's a protocol at these events. You should follow the protocol. But I would say that for me, it's it's not that objectification is bad unless we're using the only definition of objectification. Which it depends. There's multiple defi definitions. But if you're using the one that says like I objectify you, therefore I treat you like an object, and therefore I have the right to abuse you, then obviously we wouldn't want anyone to object anyone but if we mean to say like to witness you to view you to have a relationship with you to experience you um i think that's fine i think the line always gets crossed with when we take it to the internet when we tweet at the person when we follow them to their home i think the issue becomes um even when you find yourself being beautiful like there's a line even socially in my own community i have to remind people like if you watch me on a certain website that's great but you can't bring those kinds of comments into my youtube chat because these are different kinds of arenas like you have to have like the proper relationship with this context so i think sometimes with people like sydney you run into these issues where people don't know where that line is. And then men who are misogynistic, let's say the one category of men who are not all men, of course, that category feels entitled to objectifying her in a cruel and undignified way because she has her breasts out. You know, I always say, and this is a little bit misandrous, that if it was a world full of women walking around with boobs out, just like wouldn't, it would be great and beautiful and we'd oodle them and oddle them, but we wouldn't naturally i think think i don't want to say men are inherently like a misogynistic right that's not a, a belief i have but we wouldn't i think be as scary 
to other women. women control their sex drives better than men do. It's I'm fine with saying well, that. Well, men it's can be true. more. I mean, I don't think you control your sex drive. I think you control what you do. I have a high sex drive. It when I say control, when I say control, drive. when I say control sex drive, I mean no, be emotional, have a sense of mature emotional oh, regulation mm-hmm. around it, so you're not acting. Out. I don't mean yeah, like you literally like okay, okay, you just change <laughs> the levels of your sex drive. That's not what okay, I mean. just checking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I no. agree. I well, I agree only because men have been um, I, I you know how they say socialized this way, but I would say it's cultural too. Like, what expectations do you have? Like, I was raised really conservative, so my brothers, you know, a lot of them are so virgins; they're not married. Why would they be having sex, right? It's, it's not a part of their religion. And they're proud of that. That's not like a shameful thing. It's like a brag, right? Because it's like, nope, I still haven't been tempted, bitch. You know, it's like a brag. So every little cultural like difference is going to bring the nuance into this conversation. My brothers certainly aren't tweeting at Sweeney, t- Sydney Sweeney like, you owe me something or I'm entitled to you. And if they are, I'll, I'll find them and, you know, <laughs> you know. But Give them a little. Who are those men is the question. And can we create a space where that's not going to happen? So realistically, no. So then she's going to have to realize the world's not fair and it's not going to treat her fairly. So then Mm -hmm. it's a matter of, did she actually know this going in? And then did she pick this branding on purpose? Because Billie Eilish picked a very different branding. Certainly. I'm going to riff off of that a little bit, if that's okay. Do so, and then I have a comment, but go ahead. Okay, so... I agree that there's a lot of cultural stuff surrounding this that normalizes um, guys acting on their appetites is good in this sense. And women acting on their appetites is treated more negatively culturally in that sense. But I think that that's downstream from another um, just basic biological fact that like guys are probably going to have more testosterone. Testosterone does make you hornier. And I'm not saying that that's an excuse because it's never an excuse. Like it's never an excuse. You should always control your sexual appetites. In fact, I would I would also take here's here's the thing here's the thing about social conservatism, okay? That nobody likes to say because it makes people uncomfortable, especially the conservatives uncomfortable, is that social conservatism is not kind to men, <laughs> like in the traditional sense. Um, and so a big part of that is like not like by virtue of your nature as a man, you have even more of a responsibility. To control your sexual appetites by virtue of just who you are. You're just more likely to have those appetites because you're a man. And that's something that's really, really important to encourage when it comes to this. And this is why I call people the freak right. They're freaks, okay? They're in this in this particular instance, sexual freaks, because they don't think they they reject this socially conservative value in place of this other more modern kind of right wing idea. Or right leaning or liberal. I call it liberal. I call it like a lib right idea or right wing liberal, whatever. These are all vibes based terms. It doesn't matter that much. The point is, is that there's this kind of new sort of right liberal idea where no, 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 actually being like horny as fuck for, for big titties and fat asses and all thing and all these different things. This is actually like the based, like, well, uh, woke destroying well, yeah. thing. Let and me, that's let been me explaining steal. shit's downstream from that. Sure, let me steal man that, if I may, um, for a moment, right? There is this uh, struggle, this this argument, this debate in the cultural sphere about sexuality, right? And what it means to be a sexual person, what counts as attractive. Um, and that's always been a cultural thing. Like, what a culture sees as attractive changes over time and it changes based on the culture right um and so in the age of social media we do have kind of a struggle going on where there has been a lot of uh in the uh in the attempt how to put this kindly in the attempt to include more people we have included a wide range of beauty standards that or are not traditional, right? Are not traditional yeah. beauty standards. They're they're changing, right? Yeah. We're trying to be much more inclusive, body positivity, all that. Yeah. A lot of people are pushing back against that, right? A lot of people would say, and, and you see this in the video game sphere as well. Like, oh, how dare they make my uh, women in the video games not attractive anymore? Now, I think that's a little bullshit, but it is a view that people are having. And so when you have people playing into these traditional beauty roles, it can be seen as a, uh, as something to promote and celebrate. So this being horny all the time or loving the, the big boobies and things like that. And just being out and open about that can be seen as a, uh, 
as civil disobedience. I believe one of the articles but, but, but called this, it civil disobedience. This is what civil I was getting at. It. To point out that Sidney Sweeney's breasts are huge tatas that are, again, super great that you want to just rub your face in. That, again, is seen as a form of civil disobedience. Funny enough, right? And, uh, yeah, what would you have to say to that? I'm sorry well, to then, interrupt you. But I would ask, well, what I would say is, like, this is what I was getting at in my intro, where I said that, like, the, there's, like, the, the sect of, like, socially conservative, uh, uh, ostensibly conservative people or whatever that are, like, actually conceding all of this stuff to the people that they don't like and have not liked. Like, all throughout the 2000s, there was the, the big conservative cultural issues in the 2000s were video games and pornography and like edgy um very very sexual like music and shit uh like lady gaga every all the conservatives fucking hated lady for this and now it's like well now the the progressive side has taken like a little bit of this like some of this and have decided that in some ways like well actually like it is good to have like in video games. But you're just, you're just stuff. wrong. It, it has been it has been the feminism and the left who has been very anti pornography for a long time, right? And you see that play out in the seventies, and you saw that with the tipper stickers, uh, tipper stickers being the the maturity ratings on video games. That was from a Democrat, uh, Tipper Gore specifically, Al Gore's wife. The- Right. This is a leftist so, kind of thing. I, I'm not. So what I'm saying is that. So I'm not denying that there were left wing reasons why people oppose those things too. I'm not saying that that didn't happen. I'm saying that it was also a very normal, socially conservative thing as well to criticize these things too. Mostly through the 2000s, where the kind of liberal left was advocating for more sort of like freedom of expression and anti-censorship and stuff. This is something you hear all the anti-woke guys say all the time. Is that like, well, now these things that used to be liberal beliefs are now on the right and blah, 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 whatever. And the thing, the point that I'm trying to get at here is that these guys and and being anti-porn has always been a conservative thing, like always. Social conservatives have always been against porn. Categorically, it's wrong. It's degenerate. Fucking ban it. Whatever. Just here's a and here's also to to my and I want to get Jane in because she's been trying to get in and I'll Thank let her go just after this comment. But I've been made aware of this and reminded of this, and I wanted to repeat this because of the uh, comment uh, Brittany made and that you made about. Uh, men being hornier and things like that. So the members of the band One Direction had to beg, had to beg their teenage girl fans to stop writing and drawing extremely graphic gay fan fiction about them on Tumblr. Okay. Right? This sure. is something that, again, it's it's not unique to men. Like, I... I it's I'm just done pushing more back that, that, that men do this more. I don't think they do. Gay, I think we just condemn gay it more. Fan fiction, though, which would huh? probably be, you said gay fan fiction, so that's probably more drawn by other men. No, and boys, no, right? no. Women no. love it. Even yeah, even but, Dream oh and the Dream Bubble, like on YouTube, like a YouTuber had to tell his fans, like, "Hey guys, let's talk about what you could draw about me." But no, women love to ship boys. All my female friends, who especially are neurodivergent, love the boy fan fiction. It's a thing. Okay, also, okay. a big part of and okay. something that we're something I would say that's kind of missing from that too is like a lot of because I had female friends growing up who were into this stuff, and the stuff that they were into with the with the gay fan fiction stuff was just the relationship dynamics of it, and then they there was there was a sexual element too, but it was in relation to like it was like a means to an end, like they it liked manifested them differently, people. but it's still it did. them taking a care like a, a real life person. And making gay fan fiction. No, nope, yes, them. I know. That's so, extremely yeah. graphic. I, it says, if I drew, right, on my well, let's talk look at look at again. the trouble. Look at the trouble that Tom got into for what he did, right? Look at all the trouble he got in. But if a female streamer did that, I'm just saying the standards are different. That if a female streamer did that, where there she was put in, pulling up uh men's Instagrams and oogling them for a while, no one would say shit. No one would say okay. shit. Right, it's because uh, but the, the moment yeah, it's done Nobody by a man, it. it's 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 a problem. But I wanted to get uh, I want to get I don't want to hog the conversation. Like I said, one of my panelists ditched me, so I'm I'm just <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm doing what I can. Uh, I want to give the mic to Jane for a minute and let her uh, let her talk a little bit, and then I want to give it to Brittany and, and we'll sure. keep the session going. Go ahead. 
Okay, so um, I wanted to reply to. I'm so sorry. Is your name Layman? Is that what I should yeah, call? Yeah, sure. Okay, okay. So, kind of um, what you were kind of just going towards, and then also what you like opened with. I think you kind of, in my opinion, I think you have it wrong. I think the reason that these articles are coming out about um, conservatives saying, you know, Sydney Sweeney showing off her boobs is this indication of the death of wokeness, is because I think the um, typical conservative like view or perception of women are is basically to be like a like a sex symbol but they want to they try to like make it in like a conservative way but so it's like you're like bearing children and you're like the the trad wife at home but ultimately you're you're really just like like a a sex symbol like you're you're meant to be pretty and young and um fertile and all these things and i think that's why Sydney being looked at as, you know, this like a uh, sex icon in um in like Hollywood again, they're they're taking it as, oh, you know, people aren't uh jumping like the feminists aren't jumping on this and like you know caring that like everybody's obsessed with her boobs anymore and all these men can just you know obsess over her boobs and she can like show them off and it's like that's it doesn't on the like surface seem as like a conservative idea but i think like kind of deeper down when conservatives like idealize women that's ideally what they should be like if we think about the 50s like all the all the women in um in commercials they all had like the overemphasized breasts and they were all like in um like the waitresses and the the car the car washes and it was just like all these um all this branding was over sexualizing women all the time and that was kind of the standard um so i think that really does go to the conservative idea and then um i had something else like on top of that but i i forget we'll it, so it. I, I promise it we'll get you yeah. in um yeah go ahead yeah so when i was referring to like concern i was mostly trying and maybe this is a issue with my wording and i apologize but when i'm referring to like social conservatism. I'm not referring to like individual guys who are conservatives. I'm referring to like the principles that are claimed to be held and that are trying to be advocated for by that side. And usually when I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking about just basically just very, very traditional, um, mo mo mostly like Catholic because I'm Canadian. Catholicism is like our dominant religion. I know in the US it's Protestantism, whatever. That's a different conversation. Don't want to get too into the weeds about that. But the point is, um, I'm mostly thinking about it kind of from that perspective and what is in line with those values. I completely agree that conservatives will do that to women in conservative ways. I just don't, I just don't think it's consistent with their values. I also think that progressive who are very, very like hypersexual and disgusting with women too, also do it, also violate their own values in different ways than they do because those are, they're not the same kind of person. Um, but that's all that I was trying to get to was like, cause if you, cause when I'm thinking of traditional conservatism that way, I am thinking of like, okay, modesty and treating the woman as a soul that you are meant to, what's the word, that you're meant to sort of unite in one flesh with and all the things that that entails is not something that is compatible. People will do it because people are hypocrites all the time, even myself sometimes. Um, and you too, Wick, and you too, Jane, and you too, <laughs> no, just kidding. But uh, the, uh, the, the idea of that is just incompatible. And it's just this incompatibility that I'm pointing to when I say that. I'm not trying to say that conservative men don't sexualize women in conservative ways. So you think I that just think sexual, that they're sexualizing women is incompatible with progressivism. Um, well, again, it depends. Not with progressivism, all of it. I think some. I think there are certain progressive ideas that. Yes. Can you give us? Uh, can you be more specific? Is what I'm asking. Yeah. Sure. So, so there's a so the there's a feminist idea that I'm vaguely familiar with. Um, not too familiar with. So if one of, I don't know if Jane identifies as that Brittany did earlier. So if she wants to correct me, that's totally fine with me. Um, but I'm vaguely familiar with this idea that objectifying women, um, men trying to objectify women in the sense that they are viewing them as an object that they are, 
um, not looking at the person. They're just looking at the physical body that's there and how that titillates them and that everything they do, including the most kind of like abusive sides of that is not conducive to something that is in line with advocating for like equality between men and women in a cultural sense, um, not advocating for that kind of reciprocity between the two. And if that's a progressive value that you feel very, very strongly about, I think that that would be incompatible with that. Now, there's a lot of left wing guys who just don't care about that. And they're mostly focused right. on like, you know, communism or whatever the fuck else. But, you know, I, I'm not so not I understand. Like you're talking idea. about that specific. I'm, I'm curious what Brittany has to say sure. um, on thoughts on this. Go I ahead. got any of that fucked up at all. I feel like there's a really interesting conversation that we could have that might deviate from the Sydney focus, but maybe not. But there is something to be said about how on a, um, the progressives and the conservatives do have an overlap of wishing dignity upon all people, whether no matter how they're expressing themselves. But then there's always like what I, I think, Lehman, I kind of like your kind of reference to like these like. I don't know what kind of useless conservatives. I don't know what to call them. Like they, they can't even be consistent. Right. Yeah. The and even, right. and even the progressives have it too, where I always say like, watch out for a progressive man. He's the first one to fuck you over because like he loves to talk a good game, but he's not a gentleman. And same with the conservative men. They pretend they're a gentleman, but they don't go to church every Sunday and they certainly don't call their mothers. So it's like, there's always going to be these outliers. And I think I come yes. from a very religious background and I would love to see dignity in both arenas. I would love to see both progressives and conservatives have and express that dignity. The question is, how is it expressed? So even if yes. you have a conservative that sees a modest woman, but then sort of, you know, abuses her, well, where's the dignity in that? Or a progressive man who sees a woman who's like more scantily clad like Sydney and then abuses her. It's like, what's what was the point of having that value? What Where, where was the value? So the question is, where's the yeah, value? Yeah. yeah I, well, my question for you, Brittany, would be where's the abuse when it comes to like the discussion around her breasts? Is, is, are we considering these things abusive? To well, I think Jane, it? sorry to mansplain over Brittany for a second, but I think Jane uh, was, was uh, actually, actually answered that question earlier for you, Wick, where she mentioned the, the live stream that Sydney Sweeney had where there was clearly some kind of mental anguish that she felt as a consequence of that. Okay, but having mental anguish over something doesn't mean abuse occurred, right? Because well, it doesn't, people, it's not, okay, get so mental we're getting anguish. Lost, I think we're getting lost in the weeds with the, the language. Sure, we can say it's not abuse, but we can say it's a bad way to treat somebody. Right? Like, yeah, you don't want people in your chat saying grossly sexual, like overly sexual things that you don't want people it being like. Depends on who's saying <laughs> yeah, that. Well, Fair enough. Well, everyone has a different line. <laughs> Even in my chat, I like mute people. Like you can't say certain things. You have to know where you are. If you're in a church, put on a jacket. Like you got to know where you are. And so I think like going to S Sydney's like space and uh, uh, like bothering her and tweeting at her and saying gross things at her that she didn't ask for. I do think that's like a, a chat abuse or chat toxicity or something. So I think in that regard, moving to what Jane was saying, like, I do think there needs to be some dignity in that. And the question is, like, how do you ask society to be dignified when our churches aren't, when our leaders aren't, when our politicians aren't? It's kind of like a hard ask to ask of society when there's no role models. So the role models have to come within your values, right? So that's a little frustrating for me to, like, put it all on her and then put it all on them. And then it's like, ultimately, you can't ask too much of society. You can only ask them to do their best. And this is what we've produced. So you also have to protect yourself in the in the meantime, because I don't yeah, think I'm humans not... are as dignified as they need to be at the moment. I agree. Um, I, I mean, I don't I don't disagree with that, but I was more talking about like the the discourse surrounding it when it comes to like articles from Unheard, articles from Reason, articles from uh, what was the National Post. Um, National Post. Again, there, there's been mountains mm -hmm. of ink spilled on this topic, and I'm just I'm just curious. Like, do you think that? I don't know if she's spoken publicly on this, right? On the articles about it and things like that. I haven't been able to find anything. However, there can be an argument to say, like you talk about branding earlier, mm -hmm. that this is just the result of her branding, right? That There's a question is, we got to ask. This is sure. something that she has, she has asked for in a very real way because well, it's working for her. Well, it's it is getting her success. But I want to I want to hear from Jane, then I want to hear from Layman, sorry. and that's the order we're going to go in. Go ahead. Um, it is like it, it might be the result like of her branding, but the branding is the result of Hollywood like kind of culture, like what will sell. And right now, like for you know most of most of 
the time in history in Hollywood, for women, sex and sexualization is what sells. So if you want to yeah. make it, you know, women, especially when you are, um, you know, naturally given, like, very, you know, a, a big boobs and just, like, a beautiful body, a beautiful face, like, you're going to, like, play to that. And I, I do not... Sure condemn her for that at all but i that's why i just think my problem is like you know use that to your ability monetize it whatever but i just like personally i wouldn't want that to be like what i'm known and regarded for it and i think that actresses especially younger actresses especially someone who dealt with like body dysmorphia for like your your breast size like i just feel like that would be an important thing to just like make clear that you wouldn't like allow that to be um, what you're recognized for, especially when you do have such talent and stuff. You um, can't really decide, though, at the end of the day, what people what Like you people said, she branded it, right? though. Which yeah, is, I mean, like, I she has, though. Yeah. Hasn't she? Do you disagree? Well, well so, so it's, I would... Oh, sorry. It's, kind of a, it's kind of like the cat, or, or like the chicken and the egg. It's like, oh, you have to brand this way to get famous, but then you don't want to brand that way to like to be that's what you're known for so it's like kind of this hard pull and that's why i think people just need to start making changes like i i I understand like i get it but at this certain time like it's not like she's she's being forced into these no one's holding a gun to her head and saying you must do this or you'll never be successful right there are plenty of of women who don't go down this route right who don't sexualize themselves right who don't like wear the revealing outfits and things like that. They do fine. They do fine. And so I do think that you can't make that excuse, right? Like, um, they're making me do it. This is the only way to succeed when it's just not true. But I want right, to give I want to give Layman a, a chance at this. Go ahead. I think you're I think you're both both of what you uh each said is mostly true. But what I will say to push back against you a little bit is um when it comes to when it comes to certain people and how they choose to brand themselves, it really depends on how they come up. So, a compare. I like to compare Sydney Sweeney to Taylor Swift in this sense. So, if you look at Taylor Swift, and I'm a I'm a big Swifty. I'm like one of the few heterosexual male Swifties. I just want to put that out there. Big Taylor one of the Swift few. Band. What are you talking about? She's got. <laughs> Oh, she has more followers than I think uh, uh, most countries have. Yeah, but they're mostly wrong. yeah, but they're mostly women, right? Uh, anyway, my what I was going to get at is is I like to I find Taylor Swift and Sydney an interesting contrast in the sense because when Taylor Swift nobody when Taylor Swift is on the come up first of all every woman gets sexualized to some degree and experiences that to some degree in um, Hollywood but when Taylor Swift was on the come up and her what what she was trying to pursue not just her of course because no celebrity exists in a vacuum everybody has yeah. Um, she was pursuing this kind of wholesome, uh, sort of like country pop thing. Sure. And she did, and like you said, Wick, you know, there was no there was no revealing outfits, none of this. And I think Taylor Swift's been consistent with that. If you look at every pop artist, as far as how much they sexualize themselves, how modestly they dress, the kinds of lyrical subject matter they're focused on, with all the mainstream artists, Taylor Swift is easily like the closest to the most modest, I would say, in that sense. And I find an interesting contrast to Sydney Sweeney because they're both young women. Taylor Swift's older than Sydney Sweeney, but they're both still young women. And Taylor Swift and Sydney Sweeney's reactions are like fundamentally different. Like if you look at this kind of, again, I'm calling them the freak right. This is the phrase I will go back to till I die. If you look at the freak right reaction to Taylor Swift, they're all calling her a whore and a woke Jezebel or whatever shit you can think of but taylor swift is clearly like the more modest person compared to sydney sweeney but then when you look at sydney sweeney who's very sexual they're like yes i love sydney sweeney even though she's like in in the every political and cultural sense basically the same as taylor swift except taylor swift is far more like conventional and traditional than sydney sweeney is and so this is this is kind of the confusion i have with these kinds of reactions towards women in in hollywood from this sect of people that we're referring to as a consequence of this Sydney Sweeney boob thing is like, like you, none of you seem like you know what you want out of this. It doesn't mm. make any sense. 
If I could, I think it's also, okay, it's two factors that I would like to point out. One, Taylor Swift is like a girl boss. She's like the top in her relationship as is the brand. Like Travis... Kelsey has his own brand, but she's the yeah. top in the relationship, as is the brand. I don't know if that's true. We love to see it, whatever. But Financially, yes. Yeah, sure. Even the way it looks, like the way they – the brand is so – they're so good at branding. I hate all – love it. Oh, my God. It's so good. It's but anyways, amazing. Okay. But so with um, – but also – It's and normality. That's what it's – that's the philosophy. There you go. Swifty and then and normality. We love on it. top of that, and I, I mean this in the nicest way possible, um, Taylor doesn't have the assets that Sydney does, so she couldn't brand herself with that hyper femininity. And so the hyper femininity is what sort of these objectifying entitled men want. And Taylor doesn't give them. She doesn't give them any ounce of femininity in the way that they perceive and want it from her. And she's too well. She's better than them, so it's a threat to their masculinity. But with um, Sweeney, there's sort of this. Um, uh, like she's first you look at her and I'm a bisexual pansexual woman I get it I like looked at her and I was like holy fuck like she's so beautiful and she's gorgeous and she's got those proportions and your brain just like it doesn't it just thinks like this is an angel like this is what angels look like but then you also realize like okay her hair is dyed and she's in nice clothes and they're pushed up and everything's orchestrated to look beautiful but I'm not taking that away from her I just mean it's 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 sort of a part of the brand as well I have to remember she is branding as well and so then I have to ask myself well, what is the brand I'm supposed to be consuming right and so i think the hypocrisy you're pointing out is so important but i would say like you like i call fresh and fit and all those people like fake conservatives like they're not conservatives don't associate with them they no, are like fresh and fit or fresh and fit are what i said earlier they're, yes. they're right liberals that's what yes. i call them right liberals exactly and that's so their their version of like conservatism and the man is in the traditional household my dad would call these men rats okay my that's not a dignified oh, yeah. man you know what i mean it's oh not yeah dignified. You, put, you put that uh you put that myron guy in a catholic school oh he's my gonna gosh. get eaten alive by everyone he's this, gonna this, probably this, fit in a little this bit fucking guy, this fucking guy gets a, a traditionally christian woman pregnant and he's like why can't you just or no that wasn't okay. my it was walter it was walter same thing same thing yeah yeah i'm yeah. gonna interject a little bit because you guys are, are being way too uh what's the word gang there's a simple explanation for why the the right has treated um taylor swift poorly especially recently right as opposed to sydney sweeney and it's not about their looks or how they present mm. themselves or branding or any of that. That doesn't fucking matter at all. The only thing, literally the only thing that matters is Taylor Swift supported Biden and Sydney Sweeney has MAGA parents so that they can, she can be at least uh, seen as on their side. It's team sports. It's that's a little. Yeah, 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 I, I agree. I, I agree. That's playing that's the what, role. That's what I was. That's what I was alluding to. It's not to, just playing no the role. It. It, it's the whole show. Right. Well, it's she's the whole also very feminine too, right? Like, doesn't that play a fantasy role? So now she's like if, a if hot girl. Reversed, if this I, was reversed, just just let me let me finish here. If this was reversed and it was Taylor Swift who had bag appearance, who was really leaning into that, and then you had uh Sydney Sweeney who's like go Biden and things, mm -hmm. they would treat them exactly how mm -hmm. they're doing now. Wait. Exactly. They would use different Wait. words and terms, but they would Wait. one would be the enemy, one would not, and in everything with all their values that they supposedly have, which again, the only value here is winning. That's the only value I they have. have. I have some great information for you that I as a Swift as a heterosexual male Swift. Okay? Taylor Swift's dad is a is is a is a mega conservative. Just openly. He's yes, not but she he, has he openly hide. endorsed Biden, right? Like she's made those yes, yes, I understand that. Mm. I understand this. I understand that that's the reflexive opposition to Taylor Swift is all that it is. It's just that she likes Biden. Absolutely. I understand. This. I understand this. What I'm saying though, I want to actually I'm going to respond to what Britney said about the Sydney Sweeney being more feminine thing. I think in a, if you think about femininity as youthful, youthful in appearance, yes, because that's just technically true because she's much younger, much younger than Taylor Swift. But in every other sense of the word, Taylor Swift and Sydney Sweeney are still equally as feminine in their behavior and presentation. I mean, they're both rich women. They're both put themselves out there as very kind of like independent sort of free spirited types. Um, um, but I would say that the big difference, though, is that unlike Sydney Sweeney, Taylor Swift has this monogamous relationship that she's in. All of her songs are about how she wants to just like find love. Does Sydney find Sweeney not um, have Taylor is a hoe, like the all of us. Okay, Taylor has a new boyfriend every six months. I don't want to hear anybody talk about Taylor being monogamous. I mean, she's monogamous, Serial monogamous, maybe, but she's right? come on, she's in a new relationship. 
You're baiting. Girl, me. she has like, tw- what You're do you mean? Me. Taylor's famous. What do you mean? Taylor is like Ariana Grande, except she doesn't sleep with people's husbands. Like Taylor Swift literally is with a new guy every fucking year. What do you mean? That's where all her songs are, are from. What do you mean? She's been. Pick- relation- yeah. I, that's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring, referring to the to? fact that. Sorry. I'm referring to I'm referring to her her ideals and what she pushes for, and she has mm. this guy who she's with right now that is a very the, here's a, here's what makes Travis different from the other guys. Okay, this is what makes him different. What makes him different is that he is actually a very fucking masculine dude in the traditional sense of the word. He is a very traditionally masculine man. He's fucking taller than her. Taylor Swift's pretty tall. He's taller than her. He's got the fucking yoked up muscles. He loves American football, the traditional sport of America. He loves his fucking beers. Like, he's a fucking dude. He's a fucking man. If you look at her exes, they're all guys who, and I'm referring purely to aesthetics here. I'm not saying, I'm not moralizing this. But I'm saying that, like, these guys are like these effeminate looking dudes, okay? I'm talking, they're walking down the street, okay? On the side of the road. And this guy is on the inside. This guy is not on the street side in his protective stance, okay? Holding her hand, walking down the street. Okay? You know what I mean? I hope what that, are I you hope communicating. Yeah, you no, know, I get it. No, I anyway, get it. I, I think we come from it. similar, like, conservative Pretty bubbles, good. maybe. Because I get what you say, you're saying. I didn't grow up conservative. I'm just... Oh, interesting. Of, that's okay. No, I grew... I, it was the opposite. My parents are super... Anyway, that's, that's, this is side conversation. Hmm. So... What I'm saying is that Travis Kells. What are you saying? Go ahead. I'm saying that Travis Kells is just like a more traditional guy as far as just how he behaves. Sure, football yeah, star. but Taylor's still more in her masculine. Like Sweeney looks like even my audience is saying Sweeney definitely more feminine than Taylor. Taylor's got that lesbian stride, bro. I'm waiting for Taylor to come out as a lesbian. Like she's got that lesbian stride. I'm referring to Sweeney. Sweeney by apparently. We she, love a love a queer. He's LGBT. Yeah, we love that. Yeah. yeah. But but also um when when Taylor Swift like first you know came out weren't conservatives like pretty down with her I think they like really yes. liked her yeah they and, did. until yeah. They did. until she started like changing and becoming more of like like the feminist like kind of type I didn't and, like, hear anyone sexualize stuff. Taylor though did anyone sexualize Taylor no, I never heard no. anyone sexualize Taylor that's what I that's what I was getting at earlier well, yeah no. two People things I mean I, I think yes, they, they did <laughs> I think they did but she just didn't play on it as much as like mm-hmm. Sydney does so it just doesn't come off that way that that's way. also possible fair. too yeah yeah fair. um but i and think the second that... thing especially recently i mean look uh the whole reason that they're having legislation about ai porn right and things like that and photoshop porn and things like that is because yeah. of what they did to taylor swift which again this is that so was horrific it's yeah. so um, that she did that yeah yeah but it's uh yeah, to say that she's never been sexualized or we don't sexualize her the same we're way. Saying, we're not, not saying she's never, ever been sexualized once. What we're saying is that it's not to the degree normally there and isn't a is... default sexualization that happens to her like what it happens to Sydney. Yeah, and I'm just, I'm just super curious. And What's the lesbian as... fucking stride? What does that mean? <laughs> Well, it's like a vibe when someone walks into the room. Like, you know how people say I have tall girl energy? Everyone thinks I'm really tall, but I'm 5'1". And I'm like, why? Okay. And she's the, referring yeah. to gay. It's she's like, saying gaydar. Well, That's not even gaydar. I'm talking about energy. Like, she walks into the room. Like, none of the men in my bubble would be with a Taylor Swift because she's too, like, lesbian. She's too gay, bro. She's too, like, it's a different vibe. She's I don't know how to explain it. Taylor Swift is so, like, it's a vibe. normal feminine person. Uh, you she's keep not, saying not normal like feminine, ever. but, like, obviously we all come from different cultural backgrounds. You can't speak for 8 billion people. Like, what the- and- you know, like that's well, what you're doing, or, though. When or, you say normal, okay. you're insinuating that there's an average in the population, which isn't true. Like, just the in cultures there yeah. is. There yes, is but a, like in the American she culture, wears makeup, she wears dresses. But like she even Taylor, like just normal. Yeah, but okay. So it's the how do I say this out loud? Is the f- the the boob thing? Okay, you ever been in a Jane? You ever been in a, a moment where like you're the girl with the bigger or the smaller boobs, and you wear the same outfit as your girlfriend, but she gets sexualized and you don't? Um, or vice versa, like the girl with the smaller boobs gets less sexualized. Are you than the girl Taylor with the bigger Swift boobs does not as does her body. Does yes, not her body feminine. doesn't evoke as much like childbearing like about. aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it like it it's not as like okay. eye catching in the sexual like reproductive sense, but at the same time, like it's still attractive. Dis- We're not saying she's not. I see the oh, disconnect. Tell me, tell me. In our views, the disconnect is you're looking at feminine how feminine she looks from like a sexual perspective. And I'm looking at it from a more sort of like lifestyle values, cultural. 
Well, listen, you said long hair and short it. skirt, so to describe normal feminine. That's well, yeah, like that's that's really cultural f- to me. Choosing to have like long hair, straight hair, that's that's like cultural. Straight hair? <laughs> wow. You can well, straighten I'm, it if you want. No, I, don't, I have to be more feminine. I have to straighten my hair to be more feminine. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not saying that curly hair isn't can't be feminine. I'm saying that it is viewed as traditionally feminine to have like long, straight blonde hair. Mm, sounds, a That's what I'm saying. sounds a little racist. Sounds a little racist. <laughs> I'm not yeah. saying it's bad or good. I'm just saying that's how people look at it. That's all I'm saying. I think saying. you're conflating conventional beauty standards with feminine, feminine, femininity. Conventional. Maybe? Hold on. Let me, let me, let me, okay. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stick up for my boy Layman here. What is, what is, what is not feminine about uh, Taylor Swift? What is unfeminine about her? So you're saying that she's less feminine than Sydney Sweeney. So, okay, let's hear it. What is less feminine about Taylor Swift than Sydney Sweeney? Go ahead. Softness. Softness. Because she dates around. Taylor so Swift has less buccal fat. That's no, what it's Brittany just said. it's just softness. Like it is, it really is a thing. Like yeah. I mean, women face it. We've been told as a woman has been told she's a man a lot in her life, and I don't have a man's body, y'all. Okay, you can check that out later. But like I do not. It's when they. I'm it's the my energy, the way they deal with me. If I cover my breasts enough, if I hide my curves. I get this masculine tone that comes in and men read me as masculine, which is appropriate. Sometimes I'm much more masculine. Taylor has a masculinity to her, but not to say that she's without femininity. She's very feminine. Even compared to me, I would say she's more feminine. You know, so I would say that even though I have more curves than Taylor, she's more feminine in presentation than I am. But then Sydney is much more than both of us could ever be. She's a queen. She's an angel. She's like the epitome of of femininity in some ways. Sydney well, just to, has bigger but like, No, no, not she, you, no, 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 it's no, not that, and it's not the blonde hair, and it's not the white skin. It's the whole aura of her. It's the way her body is shaped. It's the way she presents. It's the way she talks in interviews. It's the way she like giggles, and the way she like looks at men, and she looks up at them. Even the campaign yeah. she did for her branding of her movie was her looking up at men. She like puts herself almost like. But like it's the branding is the it's that's why men I think go for her a little bit in in the way that they've again I think it's a brand bros like it's like I, cutie I flirty like like giggly like oh like like yeah I I totally get what you're saying it just like literally you could be outspoken and you'll be called a man like a guy will just be like oh you're probably a tranny because you have like a, a an opinion about something like that, that's just how people are <laughs> she's right Wick she's right she's got your Wick none of you are right <laughs> no uh, look at my DMs. All of your opinions. Look at my DMs. No, I, right. I, I don't disagree that you've been called terrible names or treated uh, less fit, li- less like a, a person, right? Because you uh, don't embody mm. the stereotypical cutesy Which is fine, by the way, because it's fine. But, oh. like, but Sweeney gets it on the other side. So it's the same amount of no- annoyance. It's people. I get who, it. You know, it's a form of objectification. But to, to, my, to my point, However, right to say that um, Taylor Swift is less feminine than Sydney Sweeney because Sydney Sweeney plays in to the specific type of femininity stereotype is something I reject wholeheartedly. I do not grant you that one is more feminine than the other. There is nothing unfeminine about Taylor Swift. She's fine. They're not saying that Taylor Swift isn't feminine, though, right? Brittany said explicitly Taylor Swift is very feminine. Yeah, like even Jordan yeah, you're Peterson. Being culturally, you're no. being culturally feminine oh, right now, Layman, because you're wrong. Look, look, look. I'm, I'm very feminine by guy's standards. Yeah, I haven't. Okay. It's just wait, like, it's just a weird thing to start. Like, it's it's weird that we're like, well, let's look at the whole. Okay, the whole this panel is, is about how people may objectify Sydney Sweeney, and so we have decided to rate Sydney Sweeney's femininity against Taylor Swift's femininity and pit them against each other like I it's wasn't a trying fucking to do that. contest. It's weird, but it's not us. Like, like I, I feel like. What we, do you mean it's not? You guys are just you're the ones that are doing it right now. This is what we have observed. This is what people have decided is like feminine and is not feminine. Yeah, we're not. We're not saying that this is good for people. To, we're saying that this is how people respond to these two people. We can get into the conversation about whether or not it's good or wrong to do it, if you like. Like we can, but we're just saying that. Like, I mean, well, Brittany's saying that people tend to view Sydney Sweeney as more feminine. I don't know if that's true. I think it's true in some ways. 
not true in, in other chat. ways. It depends. Ones in chat, if you think uh, Sydney Sweeney is more feminine, and one and twos in chat, if you think that Taylor Swift is more feminine. Let's get this. Let's do some science here, gang. Come on, ones, if you think Sydney Sweeney is more feminine, and twos, if you think Taylor Swift's more feminine. Spam those numbers, gang. Let's see them. Let's see them. But anyway, Sydney is like the the poster pinup girl. Like like she's like the the ideal like like pinup girl that you would see like on a on a sign in the in the 50s or 60s like she is the it, pornified pinup girl yeah it's yeah. like the pinup girl but also with like all the modern shit in there too because you can find like her modeling and she's wearing like very and androgynous looking clothes sometimes you know she's hanging out with hunter schaefer the trans woman on euphoria and she looks like super left wing in that way too wait but, yeah who's it what what? Who's trans? Hunter Schaefer. Oh, oh, oh. From Euphoria. I'm sorry. I thought yeah. You, okay, I was confusing people. They're both blonde, right? No, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm not good with the faces. Okay, okay. Um, my audience is yeah. clicking one. What was one? What was the one option? One was Sweeney. for Sydney Sweeney. Okay. But I, I <laughs> Think get Marilyn like, Monroe versus Audrey Hepburn. They're both. That's a, that's a good comparison. Thank no, you. That's a good comparison. I love both of them. Because, because Marilyn Monroe was also like kind of a more like sexually open person no, no. for the time, but was still very feminine. Mm -hmm. And Audrey Hepburn was the more kind of, what's the what's the word that uh, the freak right likes to use? This aristocratic elegance to uh, to, to Audrey Hepburn. And if you, you know? don't like, think about, um, uh, what's it called, Roman Holiday? In that, in Roman Holiday, she's much more boyish, Audrey Hepburn. She's much more on the scooter and running around and being less feminine. She's much more of the boy. Like there is a, again, this is all like a spectrum. It's all energies like, what, Wick? Have you never... Why what? am I the only one who is refusing to reify these sexual stereotypes? No, no, they're not sexual even. Stereotypes. They're just like aesthetic. Yeah, think no, aesthetic I, I then. My word. Yeah, yeah, yeah think about Jordan Peterson. You know, of what makes a woman a woman, well, right? No, 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 no. Like, I think a woman can be just as feminine driving on a scooter than they, they can wearing well, like cleavage on. down to here. No, 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 no. And wait. You're... Their, their big old titties for everyone, right? But like, that sounds I like you're... That's okay. Are you saying I'm not allowed to be masculine? You can be masculine all you want, but that's a fundamentally different thing than driving on a scooter or not showing off your breasts. Well, okay, it's kind of like when women start to wear pants, it was seen as like more masculine, right? Like I Love Lucy was the first woman on television to wear pants. I grew up with I Love Lucy, right? That was a masculine decision she made. And now we we deviate from like what masculinity looks like in terms of pants, but there are masculine pants and feminine pants. That's why women get, like it's called fashion, right? And then the yeah, fashion- but one has yeah, pockets, one doesn't, let me, but go let ahead. Me ask, let me defend Wick for a second. Let me, or not, maybe not defend him, but take his side for a second. Let me ask you this, okay? What's more feminine, female pants or skirts? I say skirts, and I say Taylor Swift wears way more fucking skirts than Sydney Sweeney does. That's what I say. So, what do you think, Brittany? Or, um, or I would say skirts are uh, could can be and most likely are going to be more feminine in general. Bell bottom yes. pants, I think, tend to be more feminine than like boot lace or boot cut pants. And I would say like the reason, um, like even women's clothing is made. There's like there's guys like cargo pants versus dress pants. Dress pants are more feminine on men. Like it's not an insult. It's an exploration of aesthetic. You're using words to express like a different mode of aesthetic. Like all of it is complementary. The only way it'd be insulting is if you grew up in a world where you think women have to be feminine or men have to be masculine but that doesn't have to be the case right so like it's not insulting to anybody everyone's a woman everyone's a man everyone's a they i don't care the aesthetic is about energy and a mixture of fashion right it's why jordan peterson's considered more feminine than an andrew tate that's considered more masculine but andrew tate's more feminine than somebody like travis kelsey and kelsey's more feminine or masculine than somebody else it's like a you know you can always compare someone to somebody else I think Andrew Tate's way more feminine than Jordan Peterson. Yeah, yeah like, a lot I, of people I, consider I, that too. A lot of people consider that too. It just depends on how you're rating the femininity or masculinity, right? Well, that's what I was getting at with uh, with uh, why you think Sweeney's more feminine. Okay, maybe I maybe I was wrong. Maybe maybe because Sydney Sweeney's breasts have broken everyone, and uh, now <laughs> woke is no longer a thing because of of her massive titties. Uh, maybe I was maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was incorrect. Um, I think that uh, you guys are playing into these tropes, and I understand you're not saying a value judgment here. I'm not saying you're wrong or not right. Yet. You're more masculine, more feminine, things like that. But I will say that the way in the discourse around femininity, not just Sydney Sweeney's, but femininity in general, on the left, right, and center, has it's fucked. 
yes. for lack of a better word. It's fun. We were we are deciding that we as a people as get to rate everyone on these qualities that again no one really has very strong grasps of. Like if you add if I add, I'll I'll do the experiment now. Top feminine quality. What what would be your answer? Top feminine and top masculine. This is for Jane. Off to, don't don't think just vibe. Oh oh god. Um, biggest masculine quality, biggest feminine quality. Go. Um um empathy or nurturing maybe? Empathy. Nurturing and empathy for, and for masculine women, and then for for masculine um maybe like uh a assertiveness or something assertiveness Brittany what do you think uh, uh, softness for femininity 100% and some sort of like I don't want to say stoic but some sort of like a, uh, yeah like a like a um, like a what's the opposite of softness hardness <laughs> I will refrain from a joke but fair enough layman same question I, the first thing I think of when I think of femininity is the word grace and the and for men the first thing I think of is death and rebirth. Hmm. I can elaborate on that if you like, but that's uh, okay. That's, that's a little dark horse of an answer for Very death. Absolutely. It's not dark. Rebirth. It's great. Uh, but grace, fair enough. But these concepts are so ephemeral, like softness. What does that mean, right? I don't even know. Uh, you tried to explain it earlier. Um, empathy, I can get that. I can get behind that. Grace, again, what does that mean? And is a man feminine if they're graceful? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe look, I, I, I think, I, I think if a man is, if I think if a man has grace, he is being more feminine. That's probably okay though. Cause I, grace I is a feel that is more of a leadership. See, for me, I think grace in the is aristocratic, right? Which I view through a masculine lens because they are leaders. And again, I understand the, that's not true. Right. But again, my, my lizard brain thinks aristocratic, noblesse oblige, Leadership, Can I tell you what I mean when like I say that, grace? That's with grace. That's with kindness. That's with with uh, uh, respect and dignity and things like that. Sure, and that I see not, as a leadership masculine. Oh yeah, I, Go I, I got you. That's not what I was. That's not what I meant by grace. When I said grace being feminine, I was kind of referring to a more kind of like Christian idea of grace. So kind of bestowing, manifesting like your actions manifesting your actions and like yeah, forgiveness, um, giving good blessings to others. Um, manifesting yourself and wanting to see like the best out of those who sin, things like that. I was kind Raising of coming, I was thinking of it in like a Christian <laughs> sense. That's what I was thinking of it. Um, like it, mo an, a, a trait that is I would Jesus associate Christ with Jesus well, Christ feminine in a Christian Jesus, sense? Uh, Jesus Christ has traits that today many would consider feminine, I would say. Sure. He, he also both. has many masculine traits. But He's the perfect uh -huh. specimen. Men can be feminine, Wick. And men women should, be, should have a balance. Is, have you ever seen Arab yeah, men? Everyone needs a balance. Yeah. All the Arab men in my family have a have femininity in them. <laughs> all of all of Arab everyone. What is a what is the biggest Arabic feminine trait in feminine in Arabic men? What is the biggest threaded eyebrows, bro? Men? Threaded eyebrows. Shout out to my Arabs. <laughs> threaded eyebrows, bro. No, they oh, yeah. groom. I They're was... groomers. Um, Arab men are very clean. My dad's very clean. Like my the cleanliness and grooming is considered a feminine trait usually. Yeah, I was, I was, <laughs> I was focused more on like ideals rather than like. Can you put ideals and... to femininity, and masculinity outside of philosophy? Are we having a philosophy conversation now? Because I'm down. I don't, I don't care. Whatever. I just, I'm just talking. Mm. <laughs> um, but uh, I was, uh, when I was referring to like grace, like a big part of that that I think is often considered very feminine, uh, just culturally, that would that I think is a big part of grace is redemption. So I, I'm sorry to drop, I'm sorry to talk, bring politics up because I know Brittany said that she's not in, not down for politics tonight. I'm just going to use this as an analogy. So did she say that? Oh, I thought she did. I I just, I'm just not in, pol I'm not an active participant in politics except as an American voter, but like I'm not in. So if you talk to it, me, okay. I might not know what's going on. Oh yeah, no worries. Never mind. I'm just, anyway, just as an analogy. And this is, this is reflective in polling data too, amongst men and women. If you pull people on more kind of like rehabilitative approaches to the worst people in society, like criminals, um, you can find that women overwhelmingly tend to support more kind of rehabilitative stuff, generally speaking, unless it's for a person that has the least amount of grace that you can think of, then they support the death penalty. 
But <laughs> when, uh, generally speaking, if you compare like, do men support the death penalty versus do women support death penalty? Men support the death penalty more than women do. And then people are against it. It's the other way around. Um, I think that that's just kind of one example, one microcosm of how redemption culturally is seen as more feminine, whereas um, retribution Bro. is seen as more masculine. Bro, have you ever? Okay, look, I have sisters and I have women friends. They are the most. No one can hold a grudge like a woman scorned. Okay, I am not no saying one. That women like, do we would not... talk about redemption when we talk about like people who are okay. Like, uh, yo, there again. This is the same thing with the sexualization things. How oh, women are more dignified when they say no, they're not. When we, women are more uh, redemption and forgiveness. No, they're not. Maybe it's women just the women are, like, in your life. Look, uh, yeah, no, this is this, this is, is the just problem across the board. No, uh, no, no, wait, 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 no, 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 wait. What are you're you doing, talking so, about? Like you're, are you're talking, these are not real the life problem. things. Here's the problem with what you're doing. Here's the problem with what you're doing. Wait, we are discussing masculinity and femininity. I'm doing the yes queen uh, hand slap thing while I talk. Um, we're talking about masculinity and femininity. Masculinity and femininity refer to general cultural trends that you see amongst men and women. What you're doing is when we're say when we're referring to general cultural trends, you're pointing to individuals and saying, "But these individuals aren't following okay. the cultural." Trend. No, yes, I'm, what yes, I'm yes, saying is this fine. trend is a lie, right? Yeah. This trend is just not. It's not. It doesn't bear out in behavior. Yes, it does. So no, no, no. So even what you said about the death penalty, I just looked it up. Like you're slightly right, but there's not much of a difference. It says 74% of men support the death penalty compared to 62% of women. So that's, that's only like statistically significant. Yeah, I think that's significant. You don't? Yeah, it's 70, more than 10%. 74 difference. to 62. I mean, it's not like a huge difference. Really? It's, it's a significant difference, though. I'm not saying I'm not trying to say that like, men and women are like more different than they are the same. I think men and women are most are more similar than different. They still have differences though. Right? Oh well, yeah. Like yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. I, I think there's yes. more I think there's more similarities than there are differences to be honest, but I think Me too. Well, I, didn't that just make sense if on. you shared that statistic? It's not that the statistics is significant, but it's also showing that there's not much significance. The both are true at the same time. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying too. No, I'm no, saying no, that... no, 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 no. I, I, I have to ask you, Layman. What is the non-physical difference between a man and a woman? One of them. Non-physical, or so we're not talking strength or anything like that. We're just or boobies or whatever, right? Well, we're talking about one of them right now. We're talking about the proclivity to support um, rehabilitation. And you think that's a woman trait, like just intrinsic in women? Versus. Okay. Majority of women of support the death penalty. It's still the majority. It's just like temper. It's like ten percent less than men. We're not. Okay, I know. I'm not denying this. I'm just are, what I, I understand. <laughs> what I'm saying is that when we're referring to masculine and feminine traits, virtues, things like that, we're referring to things that you can see more often in one gender than another. You are more likely to see a trait to see support for rehabilitative virtues in women than men. It doesn't mean that men don't support those because these are referring to general things that you see. They're not referring to these like fundamental, like hard lined things that people will just do naturally. Okay. Though I do think that sometimes people do that anyway. There's some truth to that anyway. But regardless, when, when I'm referring to the death penalty here as an example, it is true that the men are going to be more likely than the women to be to pursue a punitive approach. It doesn't mean that's that women not don't. true. Okay, that that's is just literally not true. true. Yes. No, this is a poll that you were citing where there is a difference, and I agree with you. It's a statistical difference on what they that's say they will do, what they say that they will do. But when you look at their actual behavior, when you look how a a woman and a man ha treat someone who has wronged them. Right? There is no difference. They will go about it different. It might manifest in different ways, but pettiness and retribution exists in equal measure I, in the so, hearts of men and women okay. both. So I agree that there are ways that women are retributive generally, and there are ways that men tend towards being retributive generally, that if they are to be retributive, will average out to be done in different ways. That's not what I'm trying to say, though. I'm referring to virtues and aspirations. People can 
be hypocrites, as we've said many times throughout this conversation. They often are, yes. Yes, it's normal. It's human nature to be a hypocrite, oftentimes. When I'm referring, I was, I tried to be careful in my language, and I said I was referring to virtues that are put onto people, not fundamental nature of anybody's like biology or anything like that. Does that make sense? I'm going to, yeah. sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, please. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Like I said, I'm, the reason I'm participating more than I normally do is because we, we're, we're down, a, we're down a, a, a dude. So, you know. Okay, you're fine. Can. But uh, go ahead. I just wanted to pick on layman just a little more. I, went, <laughs> I wanted to call you out because like, you're talking about like the death penalty thing being more, um, going more with men than women. But earlier when you were defined or when you were describing masculine traits, you said mm. like grace and then associated that with forgiveness. No, 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 no. I was, I said that was feminine. That was the first thing I thought of when I thought of feminine was grace. Mm -hmm. When I said oh, masculinity, oh, okay. I said death and rebirth, which I haven't elaborated on what that means. <laughs> For some reason I thought, okay, maybe I just got confused, but I thought when you were saying forgiveness, I thought you were talking about the male traits. I think Wick brought up forgiveness. Um, I did because of grace, forgiveness, that uh, they're I, I, not I might have the just same. But yeah. Never mind. Never mind. No, but. it's fine. Okay. Um, no, but but uh, again, I just look, when we look at how people behave, right? When we look at what they do, not just what they say. You can't really listen to what people say. You got to look at their behaviors, actions versus words. Actions speak much more loud. Um, and when you look at the behavior in general of people across the board, men and women, they tend to have the same sorts of values in a culture. So, for example, um, generally, yes. Generally, again, generally, yeah. if a woman is wronged, they will seek revenge in certain ways. And if a man is wronged, they will seek revenge in other ways. But they both are if equally they... likely to seek revenge, which is the Ooh, principle can, at play. Can I ask a question I about that? I didn't, Please. I didn't grow up with very many people who are, I first of all think revenge is undignified. So it's absolutely immoral. Me too. But I do not know a lot of people who ever sought revenge. Most people I know are very cool headed. They broke bread or turned the other cheek. I grew up very religious. Like I do not know, I almost can't name, I can name like maybe three or four or five maybe people in my direct circles that ever, maybe, I, I would have to think about that. Revenge is not normal where I grew up. It's very yeah, revenge bad. Is, Good. Revenge is, revenge is very antithetical. It's very agree. bad. Look, yeah. you're preaching to the choir here, mm -hmm. both of you. But again, uh, the reason I value it so highly is because I've seen again and again and again, example after example, after example of how we have had literature written on this. This is something that people have been trying to get rid of from the human psyche for a long, long time. For sure. You guys ever read The Count of Monte Cristo? Mm -hmm. right? It's a great book about revenge and its empty nature. Um, and there's, there's more, right? Less classical examples. That I think most at. revenge stories are actually often pointing to how dark yes. revenge is rather it than is. being it's a empty. virtue. But, but um, but, and I, but say, just, I feel like, look, just let me finish, mm -hmm. right? Just, just briefly, right? Um, this idea that, uh, revenge is on, it's on a comeback. It's on a comeback. The reason we fight so hard against it is because there are so many people who advocate for it, who like it, who want to do it. Um, and we see this in our it politics good, all yeah. the time. We see it in how people behave interpersonally all the time. We see every, like, I will, I've seen it again and again and again. Why'd you leak that person's DMs? Because they did it to me. So it's fair game. Why'd you do this to this? Yeah, Why'd you betray this person? Because they did it to me. I'm just get. I'm just... This is just fair play, right? I'm treating yeah, them how they a, treat me. It's an this eye for an eye. Revenge yeah. arc is so common, not just in our space, but in politics in general, and in just in generally in interpersonal behaviors. I've seen it again and again and again. I I don't know. Uh, sorry, I'm going on a rant here. I understand that, but it's, it's just a. I think I think you're right. I think you're right that societally, mobs of people like revenge, and they promote it in their groups and i'm not a fan of that but i would say individually usually i would say unhealthy people seek revenge and healthy people seek revenge and i would argue most people most people are still suffering from being unhealthy and i would say that that's a part of that right like i have a philosophy perspective on that but i don't know very many people individually who seek revenge but i know lots of groups of people that promote revenge energy sort of like online and with mob mentality uh I could I go ahead riff off of that a little bit. Um, yeah, like revenge. I think is I think it's human nature 
to uh, want to pursue revenge. And I think it's just like another appetite that you just have to learn to manage and not act on um, because it's, it's kind of a vice and go away. But I think um, I'm just going to set the revenge thing aside for a second um, because I think you were getting at something wick about how men and women both approach kind of like, I think instead of revenge, I think the right word might be aggression. Well, you can use like different behavior if you want to. If you want to pick so, a different behavior, like yeah, uh, yeah. So, so I'm just, I just want to, I just, yeah. Let me just get to it. So, so I think when it comes to like acting aggressively onto other people in ways that are spiteful, let's say, I think that there are diff. I think that men and women do do that. I don't know who does it more than the other, but I think that there are unique ways that women tend to do it and how men tend to do it. So the way that men tend to act more likely than women to be aggressive to others is to like beat the shit out of them. <laughs> Not that women don't get into fights. When I was, I remember growing up when I was in school, man, the, the fucking, the fucking fights that the girls would get into were more brutal than the guys a lot of the time, <laughs> to be, to be honest. It was look, crazy. If you, if you but, look at the stats and you look at uh, abuse in domestic relationships or interpersonal, interpersonal, what was the term now? Domestic abuse, basically. Um, the groups that do that the most uh, tend to be lesbian couples. I feel like right? the study is so misrepresented in media, but like it is, it is kind of misrepresented. But domestic violence is very high in lesbian communities. Like people hit each high. unhealthy communities beat each other up, and most people are unhealthy. Yeah, I think don't hit a, your partners. That, I think that's a different conversation than what I'm trying to have, though. Where we're, I'm comparing like men generally and women generally. Men uh, using violence and aggression to act out, and I'm pointing out that. Women do it too towards hey, you're other doing the, women. Uh, you're doing They're not the fighting again. men. You guys are having two lose. different yeah. conversations. I don't know if you guys actually realize this or not, but they are two different conversations. I think you're more Layman, I don't no, know I, you, bro, I'm but like you're too. much more philosophy based, my bro. And Wick is political. So like he's talking about political and you're literally having a philosophy conversation about like the dynamics of men and women, which means no, like no no no, no 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 no. Hold on, hold on, wait. I'm sorry. I have to a mansplain you again. Okay, go ahead. Just okay. So so <laughs> so um, I am, I think I'm agreeing. Uh, okay. I think what I'm about, uh, the reason why I was going to go on this was just, I feel like Wick's going to agree with this, but I feel like he's misunderstanding what I'm saying. So Wick, I'm not saying that no women do physical aggression ever. It's not what I'm saying. Okay. Remind you one more time. I'm referring to trends. Women, men are more likely to act violently against other people than women are. This is just true. You can look at the crime stats all day long. Okay. They're getting arrested for it more. Yes. Can I cut in really, really quick? They get punished for it more. Do you yes. think? Do you think? Uh, do they though? do it? Oh, just real quick, and then I'll let sorry, you. Sorry, sorry. But sure. This is a problem with using these stats, right? Like this is why everyone will say, "Well, men are most likely to be sexually abusive." I don't know if that's true because they're most likely to be punished for it, where women get off the hook for it. Women are violent all the time, but Ooh. because they are weaker physically. No one takes yes, it as but, seriously. Yes, but we have stats on one of those things, and we don't have on the other thing. But I'm That's, I'm pointing out the problem in the stats. Wait, I agree with Wick. You can't generalize because we don't have the data because no one tells the truth. And when we take data, we don't know because we don't actually have a healthy enough society to give us the right information. Okay, then we can't talk about anything. Then I know <laughs> no that's why you talk. I, that's what I that's mean. That's the problem with this. I want to. I want to. I want to pass the mic to uh, Jane who's trying to get in there. Go ahead. And, yeah. I just have a question about this. So, so you're saying you know men are more likely to act aggressively. But do you think physically? Well, hold on. Yeah, right. Physic physical, physical aggression. aggression. Yes. Do you think if women did have equal physical capabilities as men, they would have more, you know, similar rates of uh, physical aggression as I men? I think it would go up. I don't think it would be equal because I think there's other factors that go into aggression than just so, your physicality. But that's a factor. So okay, so you think it is like also a psychological and you know biological hormonal. aspect that's hormonal. not just physical i'm thinking hormonal a lot of okay. the time too um affects that and another and what i wanted to get at too i was surprised this is going to be i thought everybody was going to agree on that okay whatever it's fine that's the nature of things um but i was going to also get for assuming but go ahead <laughs> i was going to also quickly mention to see if people agree with this a way that I think women, a specific type of aggression that I think women do more often than men, which is reputation destruction. So I think that 
I introduce you to President Sunday as counterpoint. But go ahead. <laughs> this is your you're doing the thing. Individual I'm generalizing, you're individualizing. And both of these things are true, right? But you're responding to me like it counters what I'm saying, but it's not countering what I'm saying. Okay? Stop that. That's usually what I do, Wick. I usually individualize everything. So you're me today. <laughs> like I said, I'm I'm playing uh and to be and you should you should yeah, on a, on a you should individualize things when you're interacting with another individual always, but we're but we're talking about um, femininity and masculinity. So what you're doing, what you're doing, is you're right. citing like you're citing a stereotype, and I am challenging that stereotype. You're citing the stereotype, saying um, women are more likely to engage in reputation destruction. I know that's I the think... common knowledge. But I am challenging that assumption that we make. I know that it is something that is a story that we tell about society. But I am saying that the story we te are telling is just that a I story. So. I agree. I don't think I that's a story. I think I think it's I think it's more likely because if you are discouraged from doing these things physically, that's basically the only other avenue you have to be aggressive is to do it verbally. And against men, but again, as we've seen, against other women, women are just as violent. No, in my I, it's not just. I a, think, it's, yeah, go on. I, I, I think murder rates, honestly, crime rates, uh, violent crime rates, and murder rates. If women had the same physical capabilities as men, I think they would be right, like along the same level. I honestly, I think, the, I think there's more factors than just the physicality, though. Wait, are you saying if we had testosterone? Because I'd be killing bitches left and right for sure, bro. That tea yeah, is no, a poison. She agrees with me. No, that not tea even, is a not poison. Even, I don't even think without that. I, not even the testosterone. I think that wasn't the like, only thing that I. When it comes to crimes, like I, I, I still think men would have probably be in like more brawls and like, like just like bar fights and stuff more. But I think. Uh, violent crimes and murder. I think women would have pretty, maybe like very slightly lower, but it would be pretty close. Well, let's let's look at the, the rash, the point. rash of stories, especially in the last five, ten years, right? Since we have become a more egalitarian society, or at least outwardly more egalitarian, we've tried to go into that direction. If you look at the stories uh, in the um, the arrests and the prosecutions of female predators right female pedophiles and things yeah. like that in schools this this has jumped up it's it's skyrocketed because we take it seriously now whereas 20 cool. years ago 30 years ago we were just like oh what a lucky dude right that's what we would have said like oh man i wish i was that kid right yeah. uh but now that we're taking it more seriously what we're seeing is that what we assumed men just did more of Women are doing it too. Women can be sexual predators too, right? I believe in equality. Yes. I believe in egalitarianism. I don't think that there is a fundamental behavioral difference between men and women on the base fundamental level. And I'm saying that we've told all these stories to explain the world, but I think these stories are, are just wrong. They're based I, my issue on is that, my issue is that shaky foundations. My issue is that what you're saying doesn't like contradict anything that i've said like they can both be true at the same time destroyed you with facts and logic okay. wait it sounds like you're wait it sounds like you're popping a bubble and you're realizing stories are everyone's stories but not everyone's stories all the stories we hear are someone's story they're just not our story oh there's it's an objective diversity truth out there there's mm -hmm. a truth out there it's just not the one that is commonly i don't think we even have access to it i'll go even further i don't think you could have access to objective truth because it's through our perception and our perception is biased what, like that's why the mythos of God is so beautiful because God sees all and knows all and he knows what's in our hearts is kind of like the idea in religion. We don't have access to that. We do not know objective truth. That's my argument. On like, does that it note, I think you can, yeah, I think it's a I think it's a distinction between knowing and believing. Yeah. I don't know if things are objectively true, but true. I believe that they are. And yeah. I think it's okay for you to say that too, Wick. Yeah. It's okay to have some faith. On that note, on that <laughs> note, we are winding down. Um, okay. We are kind of coming to the end of the show. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank everyone for being here. This was a spirited discussion on what started as a uh, topic on Sydney's uh, Sydney Sweeney's breasts has evolved and morphed into um, stereotypes, gender roles, how we uh, 
objectify people, uh, femininity, all these topics. We had a little write-off between Taylor Swift and Sydney Sweeney. That was fun. I hope you all enjoyed objectifying women and writing them for our pleasure to argue about on the stream because I sure did. What do we got coming up? I'm going to give every one of these people a closing statement. Uh, where can people find you? Where they can follow you if they'd like to follow you, etc. Um, but before we do that, tomorrow we're going to be talking about uh, DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Is it destroying America? Maybe, right? Is it being responsible for all these disasters that are happening? Maybe. Is it really something that we should be pouring our time and energy into, or is it, uh, is it racism in disguise? We're going to be talking about it tomorrow. We got Joe Lewis on, right? We got David Cray. We have uh, Tyler. He's coming on, too. It's going to be a fun discussion. It's going to be great. Castle will be here. Come in, 6 p.m. Eastern. Tune in. Thank you for the sub, Parallax. Thank you uh, for everyone who followed today and subs and all that. It was great. Really appreciate it. We're going to pass the mic to Layman, and we're going to end with Brittany. Go ahead, Layman. What you got? Yeah, it's a fun conversation. I always love mentioning the philosophy of normality. Every chance that I get, it's a great philosophy that everybody upwardly mobile, normal, pro-social, middle-class culture, as Taylor Swift wants and <laughs> projects. It's great. So yeah, um, my, uh, my links I put in our chat, Wick. Um, so you can put those in your chat if you like. Um, but if you want to follow me, my name is Layman. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, my at is <laughs> very, very dad-like at. It's a, a guy being a guy. That's my at. Um, and uh, on YouTube, you can just find me, Layman. Uh, my new video on my channel, you should watch. Freak. It's called Freak Politics. It's a manifesto uh, detailing what it means to be freak right, as I've said earlier here, and freak left, contrasted to the normal right and the normal left, and how when you are pursuing political life, but you can take it outside of politics, you can refer it to your own personal life too. I would completely um, uh, support that too. Um, contrasted to normal left and normal right, normality versus freakishness, why you should be normal and not a freak. You should watch that video. It's, it's on my channel. It's a good video. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Well, thank you Congrats for being here. Really appreciate you. Check them out, gang. Jane oh. Gypsy, go ahead. Okay. Um, yes, Jane Gypsy, and the G and Gypsy is spelled with the number six. I'll put the uh, my YouTube channel in the in the chat, and then I'm also on Twitter. It's the same uh, uh, tag or whatever. But um, yeah, so I think what I've gathered from this debate is that the basically the right and the left uh, sexualize and objectify women to their you know, on their terms to like when it suits them. So it seems like the conservatives are liking Sydney Sweeney's boobs because they like to, you know, just embrace and enjoy the the typical and conventional female sexuality look with without any like pushback. And, um, you know, w what they won't accept is when, you know, what the left does is when women embrace their sexuality, like sexual liberation, and then try to profit off of it without men getting to profit off of it, like, you know, through OnlyFans and stuff, that's when conservatives cut off the, you know, the acceptedness of embracing female sexuality. Um, and so, yeah, I, and just my problem is I just think Sydney should, I just personally don't think she should accept being objectified and being recognized and known for just her boobs, because she really is pretty talented. And, um, smart and stuff um yeah i think okay. that's it good talk well no thanks, thanks i'll let me. her know i'll dm sydney sweeney that you do not approve of how she uses oh, her body don't do that and you will please you will don't. uh you know I'll, I'll make sure she gets that message but thank you for being here where can people find you again uh jane gypsy i'll put i'll put my youtube thing in the please chat do. uh last but certainly not least the one the only the man, the myth, the well, the woman, the myth, the legend. I'll take man. Brittany Simon. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, You can find me at Brittany Simon on YouTube. Um, My ending thoughts will just be that I am always grateful that humans, no matter where they are, are not monoliths and we are diverse and different no matter our labels. 
And shout out to Sweeney and to Taylor. Both are feminine in their own ways, and I'm here for it. Um, check out my latest video where I correct a slanderous post that has been going on around, uh, about, around, wait, has been going out around, about? Hmm. Language. It's 2 a.m. here, guys. There is a slanderous clip of me. I have debunked it. Check out my latest live stream on it. It's nine hours long, and it's worth it. Watch the highlights. It's time. Nine Don't hours worry. to debunk to Well, you know, a tweet. a lot of people have made a lot of content about me, and it's been a year, and it's time to tackle it all in one video, so no one has to watch anything else, okay? It's time stamped. It's time stamped. Okay, with that said, thank you for having me. I did enjoy it, and my audience enjoyed it as well. They really did. I'm glad. I'm glad everyone liked it, gang. We're going to raid out. We're going to say hi to Tuna Chip. Mm. So make sure you spam those emotes. Tuna Chip. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. Wave bye, right, everyone. Bye, 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 bye. bye, bye. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da.